Hello people, I'm Raul and welcome to my lessons to learn about realistic drawing. Today, in the first lesson, we're learning about our supplier introduction and the paper. So I want to present my papers that I'm working with, used in my portraits. And I'll start with this canson, as you can see, 250 GSM, 21 by 29.7. I recommend this paper if you're looking to become a professional artist. Strathmore Bristol paper, 270 GSM. Everything like papers and suppliers guys you can find on my youtube in the description let's go for the bigger i have frisk bristol paper again 250 gsm press it 420 29.7 millimeters so that's really nice paper i did a lot of portraits on this even dwayne johnson and uh, marilyn monroe portrait if you want to see anything like this by videos you can have a look on my youtube channel for more videos I'm going for the newest paper that I found, Fabriano Artistico. You can make very nice soft texture if you shade even with colored pencils. As you can see, I finished my Captain America portrait on this paper, 300 GSM. So it's much better. It's A3 size paper. The size is a little bit bigger with a few millimeters. Dollar Runway, which is very big paper, 5942. Uh, 420 that's really nice paper i did a commission for germany on this paper and my customer was excited for my commission did unfortunately i can't show you this commission because it was very private and very confidential for this guy uh, let's go further guys see how many suppliers we need to become a professional artist and we see a demonstration on this as well before to talk about suppliers of course we need to learn about the pencils the pencils are in and more grades so this is faber castell 9000 i'm using a lot of time with faber castell 9000 and these pencils starting from 2h to 8b so we have 2h h f h b b to b 3b 4b 5 6 7 8b very nice pencils and very soft on the paper that's graphite pencils as you can see very hardly using on the dark tone i'm using more and already you know i can draw a portrait only one pencil and if i can do with this i'm selecting this 8b grade so i can draw with only one pencil before to going further i want to present again two nice pencils just came yesterday with amazon and i want to recommend this pencil as well but before i need to open this we're changing from now criteria of the work we're not working only with graphite so this is very nice from germany come for the artist 11 bit graphite mat what means this mat when you draw on the paper you will see it's not important the lights the position of the lights because this is a uh, matte and it's not a problem with the lights on the paper because it's shiny you know for the graphite always shiny and we have problem how to take a photo on the picture or something like that so look at that very nice pencil and also they give me faber castell blending stone i never use this an eraser of course very useful and also i have faber castell sharpener i will give this gift to my 8k members this sharpener because I'm using Derwent manual sharpener. So let's talking about the pencils. We have more grades. So let's have a look how many grades we have. Oh my God, 14B. That really going to very dark tone. HB is the first light tone. 2B, 4B, 6, 8, 10, 12B, same as Stadler Maslumograph and 14B, the last one, which is the brilliant one. So I recommend guys have a look on my link on YouTube in the description and you can find Faber Castell or you just write it down on Google Amazon and go on the shop area and find for 11 bit graphite mat. We're going further and we're talking about more interesting suppliers. Mechanical pencil. Uh, I do a lot of details as you can see in my Captain America portrait. Very easy to refill and very sharp as you can see open 5 lead. Craft Gear 1000 HB grade. I'm using more mechanical pencil. As you can see, I have this one. I have open 5 grip Faber Castell. This one is 4B grade inside of it. So if I need for eyes drawing the pupils or anything like that, I'm using this 4B grade or for the arch of the eyes. I will show you when we get to that lesson. Don't worry. If you stay with me and if you're coming live with me, you will find and you will catch all lessons. Today, after the supplier presentation, we start to do a demonstration what the pencil do. And we're working with Faber-Castell, guys. Another one, this is HB grade, 0.5. 
HB, hopefully you can see very well people, 0.3 and I'm gonna use this for hair, very nice soft hair, as you can see it's very very light refill inside of it. So Faber-Castell very thin, 0.3 made in Germany as well. How to blend and shade the graphite pencils. I will start with blending stool and during the process guys let me clean a little bit the table and make a demonstration. This will be the first lesson and we're learning about the shade. It's very important to know how to use the pencils and how to shade with the pencils. So we're going back to Faber-Castell because this will be our pencil for today. We're working with this Faber-Castell. I will zoom now to see very clearly what we're working today. Hopefully this will be enough. Of course guys, there's more pencils in our realistic drama. You can use Tadel Marslumograph. There went pencils as well. We shade with every grade here, so we know and learn about the grades. We're not working with mechanical pencil today because it's not reason to do that. We're only wasting our time. Let's see. You know my way to shade. The first one, you need to learn how to use the pencil when you draw the details. The hand, the position of the hand is this for me. And I draw the details and also let the part for the highlights. When I do the shade, you already know, doesn't matter how long the pencil is, I'm keeping in my palm and I bend the pencil in my palm. So let's go further to shade everything we have here and also we put the grades on the bottom of this. So this one we're going very light to shade to see how the grade working. Stay with me guys, hopefully will be lovely time spent with me to learn about realistic drawing. I do my best to teaching you everything you know, everything you need to know about realistic drawing to start to draw a portrait. It's very important to know guys how to use the pencils and uh, why they are in more grades or how to blend, shade as well. And as I told you guys, after we first lessons and after we know about the pencils, we're going to draw some objects and shade that objects. I will show you how we need to put the shadows and everything about when we draw a globe or a cube. I'm going very light with this 2H. For the description I'm gonna use 8B grade. And I put here on the bottom 2H. And we do this with all pencils. If you do this scale by grade, even if you draw a portrait, you will find out the perfect grade for your face for the portrait. I'm so happy for the new pencils guys that I present before. Faber Castell working hard for the for artists to have everything they're looking for. So from now my portrait will have no problem for the shiny part because I will work with matte. Matte is like a charcoal but still graphite pencils. And as I told you before, I'm not working with charcoal, even I know how to do that. My art is by graphite pencil. As you can see on the top, I put shade by blending stone. The second one, it will be shade by cotton buds. And the third one, shade by brushes. Now, as you can see, this is already a bit darker than the first one, and I will call this age. As you can see, Faber-Castell are very light on our paper. Of course, sorry guys, I forgot to mention my paper of lessons. This is Strathmore Bristol paper, which is very light and soft paper for blend. Of course, remember guys, we're always working with very good sharp pencils. I've seen a lot of artists, even with colored pencils, no very sharp pencils, but very good portraits and drawings as well. I don't know, maybe it's the way to working like that. My way is to work with very good sharp pencils and I'm working in layers. As I do now, as you can see, if I'm working in layers, I can build the grade that I'm looking for. You can do this um, very easy test home. Just keep practicing to do this. And maybe in the future you will keep close to you if you carry on to draw the portraits because this might help to select the appropriate color for the skin tone. After you have everything learned from me, you can start to draw a portrait. And you will see how is it after you learn these lessons. Now we know guys, that's why the pencils are in more grade. So you, we can have chance to select the appropriate color or tone. As you can see guys, my position of the pencil for shade on my paper are very very bent in my palm almost the direction same with the paper and if you try to do this you will see how comfy you will feel your pencil in your palm without problem 
Hopefully these a few lessons for realistic drawing are very helpful from now because you will find during the process more things than can you imagine or maybe you didn't know about them as well so that's why I'm here so we can deal with if you stay with me live guys you will learn a lot of things about realistic drawing and also to the final of the process we're learning how to take a photo to your drawing after you finish how is the best way to photograph your picture uh, look at that at the gradients guys so I have the 2 age grade which is which is very light for the skin tone for the ladies for the kids if you draw children's if you like to draw children's portrait you can start to do this with 2 age and look at that at the 8 B grade now it's very nice and dark uh, we can shade the graphite pencils using blending stone, cotton buds and soft uh, brush or if it's about the dark tone we're using dry brush and I present a lot of time in my drawing. So I will start with blending stone. Of course we're talking a little bit about blending stone as well. I'm working with three sides of the blending stone, not more because for me it's not necessary to waste my time with different blending stone. I have number one, number two and number three. Uh, I'm using number one when I blend the eye a pupil or eyelashes. I'm using number two when I blend the nose, outside of the nose and uh, also the lips. I'm using blending stump when I draw like a background and I need to blend a larger side. With this blend we can blend here so we can go faster job. I'm going on number three today and let's see how we can blend with blending stump. Starting with 2H, when I finish just let me know what is your preferred type of blend. Blending stump, cotton buds or soft makeup brush. The lessons will become more interesting step by step after we're learning a few ways how to use these suppliers and pencils because we start to draw objects and we learn about how to shade them. I recommend you guys to do this to have close to you always. It's not a hard job to do and it's not taking too long. If you do this, take only one centimeter, it's not more than one centimeter square and you will see always when you draw portraits you have your scale for grades when you draw skin or dark tone. So this is the way to blend with blending stone. Before to blend with cotton buds, of course we need to go to fill this. As I told you guys, I achieve loads of skills in realistic drawing. So if I want it, I can draw even with only one pencil a portrait. I know how to use the pencils. I know from one pencil I can do more grades. Like this palette of the color. Thank you very much for your patience guys. I see you very patient with me. So same the lessons will be like a drawing of the portrait because we keep practicing and we're learning about our supplier the pencils and the most important way to do so we're starting to blend these guys here for the first one so very smooth i do my best from the middle as you can see when i start to blend the same grade and if I don't need to add ingredients, I start to blend from the middle to outside, pushing the graphite everywhere. As you can see, that's my way to blend with cotton buds. But as I told you, if I'm working with gradients in more colors, like this to this, for example, I'm going from dark with blending stone, finish with the cotton on lighter side of the paper. When I finish with the lesson, I would like to see one of your drawing after my lessons. If you like, you can do like me, three examples to do this, to see and uh, select everything you like or only one if you like. But you already seen my way to blend is I'm using all three ways, depend for the process. As you can see, because I'm going with the only graphite not colored pencil, I'm going all around with this and I blend all the squares. With this graphite is not a problem because of the gradient of the pencil it will become darker and darker with every square that I blend. Yes, you will learn how to shade only one pencil, but you need to wait for that lesson. And we're going further to learn about the brush. Let me explain my preferred brushes. I have loads of brushes. And I'm using this tone for skin tone. I'm using this dry. As you can see, they're twins 
like brothers, but I just chop at the top of the brush so I can make the harder one. This helped me to add the dark tone, we'll get there soon. And I have this smooth and soft when I blend, for example, the outline of the face. I'm going soft with this and you will see when we draw a portrait and I'm adding the graphite on the outline, pushing inside to build the gradient of the face. I'm going to add graphite. This is a little bit smoother than the first one, but it's the same work with this. And I'm not working with this. With this, I'm only uh, clean my paper for the eraser. When I'm working with eraser, you will see how to clean the paper very easy because it's very important. Don't let like that when you use eraser and you will see that one soon. We're going further to talking about the erasers because I need to add another square here, for example. I will add quick to show you how to blend dry brush to, the, uh, to achieve the dark tone. If you need a dark value, you can achieve very quick. I'm just smooth, soft, up and down, forwards and backwards. And look at that, what's happened with the graphite. Become very dark. And this dark tone will help to make the dark tone that we're looking for in our portrait. So that's the way when I do dark background or shadows for the portrait. As I did on a Captain America, close to shield. As you can see, this is darker than everything I have on the paper. I think so. This is very nice idea to use for dark tone. So look at it, how easy you can add dark, very dark tone on your paper. Only use 8B grade and this dry brush. I'm going to make a demonstration with lighter. Hopefully you can see very well what we're doing here because this is very important to understand everything we draw. It's made the squarely black, exactly as by so it's made the squarely black. So now we're going to try 4B grade in this square and we're using the same technique to see what's happened because I just chop at the top of the brush and it's very hard when you see when you blend the paper because of the harder of the brushes it will smooth your paper and it make like black so if you don't have 8b grade or you have cheaper pencils you can add this dark tone even with lighter grades of course if you want to do dark tone then normal can you do just repeat the layers you will see how dark you can go repeating the layers and look at that very nice smoothing my paper of course for this job guys you need to have a professional paper like bristol i'm not recommend this job on a xerox paper normal cheap paper but you can try if you like so look at that with 4b grade how dark i gone and if you check for the 4b is here blend by blending stump cotton buds and soft uh, i didn't start with soft brush so i will start to show you soft brush as well so look at that this dry brush beautiful job made if you're happy with this technique you can use in your art drawing let's go lighter now and i'm using hb grade because hb grade every people have you should have in your drawing hb grade i'm going a little bit faster to shade now because i don't want to take you too long with me even if it's my pleasure to keep him long with me now we learn about the shade with soft brush is a brother for the dry one but this is not chopped as you can see let's start to smooth how to smooth and blend from the middle i pushing the graphite in all sides of the square look at that this soft brush it will help very good i have a lot of lessons to show you look at that with soft makeup brush how nice you can push the graphite into the paper and my special one i'm blurring the hair looking realistic the blurry part for the hair of the drawing if you're new to my channel please subscribe on my channel and don't forget about the bell notification because i'm coming with more videos soon remember guys if you do only one of this make one and keep close to you and when you draw a portrait you will see how useful it can be when you need to looking for the color of the skin it will be more easy to find the scale for the skin thank you very much guys for the hearts i appreciate you let's see how many ways we learn today lesson number one art supplier introduction presentation of each supplier pencils and paper uh, how to shade we can shade i think there's more way you can shade but my preferred way are this i shade by blending stump i shade by cotton buds and also soft brush so i'm using all of them if i shade uh, skin cheeks i use soft tissue mixed together with soft brush when i shade nose ears i use cotton buds so for me everything is going for shade depend how you like to shade but remember do this palette of the grades 
and keep close to you on a paper. You will see and you give me right, oh my god, this is great man, he show us how to find the perfect skin tone for the portrait. How to build a gradient, which is the most important part. So this is the first one, is 2H, this is H, and carry on from 2H, I just go another square. Why I telling you about the gradients? Because for me the gradients are very important when I draw a portrait. I like to make the portrait looking like a 3D, so we need to build in gradients to make this 3D looking because we're looking for shadows and don't forget the next lessons will be how to work with the objects and how to shade the objects. Right, let's talk about the gradients. The gradients are the most important part for the portrait. Because always when I draw a face or skin or a portrait, I need to do like a 3D. How we make this 3D? We need to work in layers from dark to light. So if you do in gradients, when you do this on the portrait, you need to mix together everything so you can go with only one color. So if I have this 4B here, guys, I need to go with 4B to half 3B. I shade soft and I'm pushing this 4B into half of 3B. I will show you a demonstration with soft tissue as well. So my way to work with soft tissue is covering my finger. And I keep all this rest of the tissue inside of the palm. I'm going by circles from dark to light. As you can see guys, now we mix all grades together, building a gradient. So that is a gradient made. I use this technique for the gradients, building a portrait. Now we're going for the erasers. I'm talking a little bit about the erasers as well. What we need to know about the erasers, we can find them in more types of erasers. I will show you, I'm working with everything I have here, so I need to show you everything. So I start with Tombow Mono Zero eraser. Tombow Mono Zero can be found in a rectangular as well. I have rectangular, this is stronger eraser, and you will see very powerful refill. I use this for drawing hair strokes, very light, messy hair. I have another eraser, Staples. So again, this is very strong and you have very good parts for the eraser. So you have all month, maybe more than a month to use this. I'm using also Faber-Castell Perfection from Germany. I love Faber-Castell mark, so it's, it's very important for me Faber-Castell. This is Faber-Castell pencil. If you want to work with this Faber-Castell pencil, you can find on Amazon. And now the last one, electric eraser. I have also a short video on my TikTok page. You can see the video for this electric eraser. It's with battery and is rechargeable, so it's very nice one. You can put new batteries and you have brand new eraser. And it's very important to know, guys, it's very powerful. I do a demonstration on a gradient part. So stay with me to see the next demonstration. If I want a lining, just line with this eraser. Look at that, very nice. As you can see, I can line over the graphite, which is very helpful. Just dotting very light with this eraser. In this way, as you can see, we draw the pores. I'm not showing you guys how to feel everything to look like a realistic skin. It's only a lesson and a demonstration for the supplier and understand what for is. When we draw portraits, we get there to show you how to use eraser for and suppliers together. Of course, we can do pores, as I told you before, with Faber-Castor eraser person. This is my special way to add pores. I love to do this highlights and everything make the skin looking realistic. I'm going on a rectangular eraser and this is very helpful for more things. One, you can line for the hair straws, very nice, look at that. For the mustache or beard, you can draw old man, old people. You can erase even unnecessary parts. So if I want to erase, I just turn that back and erase everything to make like a perfect line. Look at that. If I do this, how straight I can go and erase everything, making like a perfect line. It's very important to know you can use in more ways this eraser. So that's why I buy this eraser, so I can erase and make the perfect lines for my portraits. I'm so happy with this eraser. I'm going on a new eraser. It's same like Tombow Mono Zero eraser. It's only a different eraser inside of it. Also, you can do the same job like rectangular. Lining for the hair straws. 
do the demonstration. And believe or not, guys, I'm not pressing with this eraser. Very light, look at that. And this eraser, like nothing happened, it's like a realistic hair. I'll, I'll zoom a little bit so you can see what's happened. So look at that, how soft and nice you can erase with this. I love this erase so much, so I draw hair with this white hair or even the details. Also, because it's like rectangular, you can do the same job like the first part. So if I want to clean and make the perfect line, I just push this eraser and make the perfect line. Which is very helpful if you do graphite over the skin face, you can repair with this electric eraser. I love this eraser because I'm using for dark tone even. And I will show you a demonstration on the darkest part here. So let's see how you can line it. It's a bottom here, you just keep and draw with that. So look at that, how soft and easy you can work with this, adding all necessary highlights that you need in your portrait. And now, when I draw a pores and the face is very dark, in dark tone, I just do this eraser. Or if you see in my uh, Captain America portrait, I add these highlights when I draw the fire sparkle over the dark part of the pencil. Look at that. I love this way to work with this, so I recommend to get one electric eraser. So it's very important to know, but I will show you a demonstration how it's working on very dark tone. Maybe you see, no, the dark tone is not erasing. Let's see if it's do. Or you can do even earrings, very shine earrings with details. And also the perfect line, guys. So remember, we can use this electric eraser even on a very, very dark tone. This is special for nails, design the nails. But I'm using to design my realistic and hyper-realistic hair. How to do this? I'm just lining with this dotting tool my paper. Let's suppose this will be a beard or a mustache. Now, because I did this, I'm coming with 8B grade and I do a soft shade over. And let's see what's happened with our paper. Let's suppose we take a square to work, a part of the work, as I always do. I take in proportion to work. So this will be the proportion for face drawing. And I can go another layer, guys, and I promise you, you will be the same. Look at that. I'm adding a bit pressure on my pencil to show you. This is special for drawing realistic and hyper-realistic old man hair. I'm not pressing gently, so you can see the hair is still there. But how we can make this if we need white back? Let's try lightly with Tombow Monazer Eraser. And I'm going only on a line. This is my way to add very hyper-realistic hair. I'm going slowly, look at that, what's happened with the hair. If I'm adding this slightly detail, but now, because we need to work hyper-realistic, I'm not adding this white erasing everywhere. I let, because I need a shadow into it. So I let a little bit part shadow it. We will see the next lesson will be how to work with the objects. We learn how to shade blend objects. So that's why I'm here to show you everything I know. And slowly, slowly, step by step, we're learning more. I will explain about the globe. Uh, we're talking about more parts of the globe. Highlights, direct light, half tone, reflected light, shadows, core shadows, everything we need to do to learn about this, guys. Thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely night and uh, take care now.